Look, Mighty N is pretty horrible competitively. It doesn't have a whole lot going for it, but it does have a niche that we can take advantage of to maximize its viability. Its quick feed ability is able to give it 1.5 times speed when it has a status condition. So we can pair this with a Toxic Orb, and we've got ourselves a Doggo that can outspeed a lot of common Pokemon. Facade is a 70 base power normal move that doubles to 140 if the user has a status condition. When we give Mighty N a Terra normal, we now have an extremely strong stab move, and Mighty N can kind of be a beast. Look, let's face it, Mighty Enna is the neglected stepchild of Gen 3, but we are here today to see if we can get this thing to work against an honestly extremely powerful overused team. Am I crazy? Obviously, that's what I'm here for. What's even crazier is the fact that today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a completely free mobile RPG played by over 80 million people across the world. It's got 800 completely unique champions to collect, and one of my favorite parts is that there's billions of ways to customize and build up your champions. Raid is increasing its roster of amazing looking champs with a brand new rarity called Mythical. A step above legendary champions, these mythical champs have a special new mechanic called Metamorph that allows them to change between two forms. Think Mega Evolution, but honestly way more intense. These mythical champions are the most versatile champions ever seen in Raid. You can tailor to fit your own playstyle and create synergies across both forms. And this new rarity of champion can only be summoned by equally awesome looking red primal shards. There's five of them for now, but with two forms it's like having ten new champions. This month also sees the return of Prime Gaming Drops in-game, so Amazon Prime users can earn themselves some special in-game goodies. Also, Raid's latest update is all about you and your clan showing off just how great you are thanks to the new Clan League and Clan Insignia feature. Customize your own super awesome logo for the world to see, and work together with your clan mates to earn shiny clan stars that'll decorate your insignia. With all this new exciting stuff coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, go ahead and click that link in the description of the video, or scan my QR code on the screen to get insane bonuses available only via my link. We're talking an epic champion Drake and other useful things like energy refills, skill tome, and XP boosters. Once you're in and crushing enemies, find me under the name Hayden, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. So hit that link in the description, and I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Let's get back into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Torkoal. We are looking at quite the scary sun-based team. There's a lot of protosynthesis, and this thing is here to set up that drought. So, look, I'm going to lead off with the Vikavolt, and there's not a lot of opportunities where I'm actually the faster Pokemon. So, I'm able to take advantage of that, go for that Volt Switch, and this thing actually lives with his invisible-ass Focus Sash. He pretty much just naturally lives it with, like, 3 HP, and that's kind of unfortunate, because now, if I were to have grabbed the kill there, Torkoal wouldn't be able to come back in later and get back up the sun. Oftentimes, you'll see people essentially lead with the Torkoal, set up the Stealth Rock, and just as they're going to do here, they're going to basically be able to switch this thing out and come back in uh, and get that ability to activate later. Of course, with the Heat Rock item, the sun is going to stick around for the 8 turns, but I actually end up hard switching into the Mighty Anna. I expect the Stealth Rock there, and the good part about the hard switch into Mighty Anna is that now, I essentially can come in, I activate my Toxic Orb, which is going to also activate my Quick Feed ability, and I am out here speedy, as they're going to end up going into the Great Tusk. Now, Great Tusk is the kind of guy that you do not want to see if you are Mighty Yenna. I go for the Facade here. I don't really want to commit the Terra Normal just quite yet. Um, so I get that Facade there without the stab damage, not going to do a whole lot to bulky ass Tusk. And Mighty Yenna is essentially sitting here baiting in a close combat. So what I can do is actually bring in my best answer to the Great Tusk. And that comes in the form of Fully Bulky Sandigast. I am a true believer of this Pokemon and you should be too. Not only does it look amazing, but it actually has a pretty decent matchup against stuff like the Great Tusk here. Uh, so he goes for that close combat. I am a ghostly sandcastle, so of course that does not affect me. And we also do not care about taking a knockoff because I am equipped with a little snackaroo. It is going to activate my Cobra Berry, reduces the dark type damage, and not going to pretty much do anything here. So I'm able to get up my Stealth Rock. The reason for that is because it's going to try to punish switches, but most of all, it's going to allow the Torkoal to die upon switching in, and it's actually not going to be able to activate its Drought ability. So I can really hinder their team by them not being able to get the Sun back up. So uh, they're going to go for the Earthquake here. I do take a bit of damage, but I can essentially just shore up, and I really do win this matchup one versus one against the Great Tusk. Uh, one of the also great reasons why we like this matchup is because they are unable to Rapid Spin away the Stealth Rock. Being Ghost-type, that sets up the, rapid, or the Stealth Rock. Uh, and being immune to them being able to get rid of it is honestly a great spot to be in. So, uh, they just decide to hit me with some more damage as I do get a little bit of chip with the Earth Power. That is important because that's actually going to put that thing in range to uh, potentially where my sweepers can take care of it. So, the chip is amazing, and as they switch into the Brute Bonnet here, I'm actually just going to go for another Shore Up. I would like this thing uh, to be as healthy as possible. It's my really only defensive mon on this team, and uh, we've done what we needed to do. We've, we've damaged the Tusk, we've got the Rocks up, 
and uh, we're just chilling, having a nice little beach day in the sun. So, unfortunately, however, this Brute Bonnet is a real kind of downer to my team. I, I do not have a lot that wants to switch into this thing. Nothing really wants to be put to sleep. Uh, it's not really worth me going into the Mightyena. Considering I'm already poisoned, it wouldn't be able to spore me. Um, but I just decided to go into the Bruxis as the safe play. Kind of looking at their matchup, Bruxish doesn't do super well for me. So I'm fine with this thing going down. And the sunlight is going to fade here, which is also going to get rid of his Protosynthesis boost. However, I, you know, I do not have the ability to take an attack for this thing. I am an ugly ass fish, and while I would like to do some smooching with these lips, I am instead just going to take a bullet seed to the face, and that is going to end up knocking out the Bruxish. So, it does reveal that this is going to be kind of more of an offensive brute bonnet with the loaded dice item, able to hit at least four times with that bullet seed. But, now this is going to open the door for a nice little revenge switch in. So, what I can do is go right into the Vicavolt. I can pressure this thing with that Bug Buzz, and not a whole lot wants to take a Specs attack from the Vicavolt here. So, the Bonnet could go for the Sucker Punch, but that's honestly damage I'm willing to take. Without the attack boost, it's not going to be able to knock me out, and this thing is just kind of an issue. So, I go for the Bug Buzz, as they are actually just going to end up switching this thing out. They want to save it for later, and they are going to go into the Tusk once again. Now, this thing... That chip damage was important because while Bug Buzz is not very effective, Vicavolt does not in fact give a damn, and that is going to take care of the Tusk. So that's an extremely annoying and scary Pokemon out of the way, and you love to see it. So now they're actually going to end up going into the Torkoal, and like I mentioned before, Torkoal comes in, takes the Stealth Rock recoil, and actually ends up dying before it's able to set up its Drought ability, and that's why the rocks were so incredibly important, because Pokemon like the Walking Wake in the back are now not going to be able to get the Protosynthesis, or the boost uh, on their on their moves. So, in comes the Iron Moth. This thing is going to get its Quark Drive, activates that, is going to get the special attack boost. And this is an extremely scary Pokemon that my team of randos does not really enjoy that much. I Essentially, what I do decide in the long run is that I can go into the Sandy Ghast here. Uh, the reason for that is I basically want this thing to be sacked so I can get a Revenge Switch, and it's not going to be super useful in the rest of this matchup here, considering the threats that they have in the back. So, they go for the Fire Dance, and while I'm able to at least take one, it is, uh, not, is it, I'm just going to die to the next one. I go for, essentially, the Earth Power's last ditch effort, but one more Fiery Dance is going to take care of me, and what's worse is they actually get another Special Attack boost, so this thing is sitting at plus two, and I have never been more afraid of a Dorito Moth in my life. However, you know who is not afraid? And that is the absolute goat that is Mighty Anna. This dude has no business in this matchup, but with that quick feed ability activated, I am going to be able to outspeed this thing. And now the question becomes, do I have enough damage to knock it out? I'm going to go ahead and commit that normal Terra. Uh, essentially able to grab a nice little stab boost on our facade, boosted by that uh, poison we've got. And this is kind of the only answer I have to this. And that is goofy ass looking Mighty Yenna, who is in fact fast as hell though. So I put the diamond on my head. Little boy is iced out. And uh, they're actually going to commit their Terra as well. I'm thinking, please do not be a defensive Terra. As it turns out, it is going to be a defensive Terra, but not the one we're imagining. They do go for the Terra Fairy. So thank God our normal type ass does not care about this heart on its head. And I'm really just kind of hoping that a facade is going to be enough to do it. So we outspeed just like we're supposed to. We got the quickest feet on this side of the Mississippi and a facade does take care of the Iron Moth. So Mightyana just out here doing exactly what it is built to do against extremely scary Pokemon, and that is honestly amazing. We did have to commit the Terra, but I'm feeling like I'm at a point in the game where it's definitely worth it for the, the Mighty Anna to have this damage. So, uh, now they get a free switch into whatever they like, and they are going to end up going into the defensive menace that is the Clodsire. So, this thing sucks be mostly because it's going to take at least three facades to kill it. So, I do want to conserve the Mighty Anna, and that's because it outspeeds the rest of their team, and I want to try to take advantage of that. So, I'm going to end up going into the Vicavolt on this thing, as uh, I expected something like an Earthquake to be able to bring this in for free. However, they end up going for the Substitute, and a Claude Sire behind a Substitute is kind of a, a, real, a real problem. I, I can go for the Bug Buzz to essentially just bypass the Substitute, but it's not going to do enough to really kill it, and I just really kind of need this Sub gone to uh, be able to kind of revenge kill it. If Vicavolt goes down here, it's kind of a trade that I'm willing to make. I'm too slow to uh, outspeed anything or really take attacks from the bigger threats on their team, so... I go for the energy ball, I do at least outspeed this thing, and that takes care of the sub. As now they go for the Toxic. They likely don't have a whole lot of offensive coverage against the Vicavolt, and the Toxic is going to ensure that uh, I'm going to take some chip damage. Plus, after a few, I'm not going to be able to switch out and then back into the Stealth Rock. So, uh, at this point, I really just need enough chip on this thing to where Mighty Anna can finish off 
uh, with a facade here. So I get that Spect Energy Ball off. It does do a nice little chunk as this thing actually pulls the old spikes out and hits me with a poison jab. But Vikavolt basically doesn't give a shit and it doesn't do a whole lot of damage and it does put me to the point where I can actually survive another turn of poison. So uh, here's why being locked into the energy ball is unfortunate because I imagine they're going to switch and that's exactly what they do. Uh, they're going to go back into the brute bonnet. So while this thing is going to resist it, it's actually going to do some pretty meaningful damage. Uh, to the point where I'm feeling confident that the mons that I have, like the Grafai or the Mighty Anna, could possibly pick this thing off. So, Energy Ball does a bit, and I do end up going down to the Poison here. So, I was at least able to chip the Clod Sire uh, to a point that I am happy with. And the main thing in the back is going to be the fact that they have a Walking Wake back there. And I have just some Rando. So, uh, now essentially I can just bring in the Grafai here. The important thing is I can come in without taking an attack here and I can pretty much just outspeed and finish it with the poison jab. So this thing is here to do some swagger shenanigans and get unburdened, and I'm thinking I still have a potential to make that happen. But the poison jab is going to take care of the brute bonnet, so that's a pretty large threat out of the way. And then now they are down to two Pokemon. It's going to be the Clod Sire and the Walking Wake. So this thing comes in, takes some Stealth Rock damage, and it's looking like it's actually close to being in knockoff range. So... I want to just go for this, get as much damage as possible. It unfortunately does not quite finish this thing off, but they're going to try to go for the substitute, and they do not have enough HP to take it. So they were likely imagining I was going for my swagger shenanigans, but now I'm thinking, hey, hold on, I'm going to go for it this time, and I actually miss. Uh, I was thinking it was worth it for me to go for that swagger. The reason is I can get the attack boost, activate my unburden, which makes me then faster than the walking wake. Um, and it would kind of rely on them hitting themselves in confusion, but it was a gamble I was willing to take, but it did not quite pay off, and now I'm down to two Pokemon, one of them being Mariana, which is, uh, at least we got some hope. So, uh, I come in here, my feet are looking quick. You see those feet? I'm just out here breaking ankles. So, I can obviously knock out the Clod Sire with an easy facade here, and then it comes down to, can we take care of one of the biggest threats in the OU metagame, which is the Walking Wake. So, down goes the Clod Sire, the chip was super important in being able to knock that thing out. And now in comes the Walking Wake. So Walking Wake is a Pokemon that definitely relies on the sun being up, both because it wants to activate that Protosynthesis and its Hydro Steam move uh, is insane damage in the sun. So this thing comes in here with his little ass arms and I am actually able to outspeed. I can go for the facade here, but this big ass dragon at full health is definitely going to be able to take that. And it certainly does, and it's able to fire off a Surf. Now Surf is actually, I imagine it's here for when the Walking Wake does not have the Sun support. It's a water move that has basically 10 higher base points if the Sun isn't up versus the Hydro Steam. So Mighty Ana goes down, and now it is my little bundle of hot dogs versus the very scary dragon. Luckily though, I can actually outspeed this thing since it does not have the Protosynthesis boost, and all Doug has to do is come out here, luscious ass hair, and flex on him real quick. Uh, the chip damage is going to allow the Earthquake to kill. Sucker Punch is potential, but I know that I outspeed because I am a fast pack of hot dogs. And down goes the Walking Wake, and that is going to solidify the win. And honestly, that was one of the crazier matches that I've had in a while against a very scary team. So listen, if you did enjoy, make sure to smash that like button. I really do appreciate all the support on the videos. And uh, as always, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.